Good day, Tommy from Golden Paint Studio here. Um, I was inspired to do this video um, because of a painting lesson with a pretty regular student of mine um, called Matt. And he, he came to me this time and he, he, he said he wanted to talk about and discuss um, non-metal metallics. And that was a very interesting thing because that wasn't, he wasn't asking me to teach him. He wasn't asking me to show him. He was asking just to talk about it. And so what I started to do, I started to take him through um, some of the different non-net models that I've done. Because each one has a different either learning property or a, a different approach. And um, I'll post pictures on my Instagram page of, of, of the different ones. You know, but 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 some are about mid mid development. Some are about experimentation, and some are about um, a particular objective, whether it be a time constraint, or whether it be a um, <coughs> um, testing out a new formula, right? Which I'll, I'll elaborate on on in a little bit. But what I decided to do was I, d I decided to, to to write down the key points, um, not of necessarily doing non mets, but of, of the mindset because you know I'm very much about mindset um, that, that really help get you through you know, so, so why are these things important well because I can give you the best brushes in the world I could give you the best recipes in the world I could give you the best palette the best model but you're still probably not gonna be able to do it yeah I could tell you what technique to use I could tell you exactly where to do it you're probably still not going to be able to do it you know so there's 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 a deeper uh understanding that needs to happen for you guys that, that are chasing the non-met effect um or it, 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 in my opinion not necessarily i don't think you you think you're chasing non-mets but really what you're chasing is better choice of colors in better locations placed on in a higher quality way all right i hope that makes sense all right if not bang a question below because more questions means i get inspired to make more videos by the way and I, I want to make more videos um so so keep inspiring me keep asking questions um yeah just keep doing them things anyway here's the list <clears throat> First thing I said, non-met, it's not a technique. When you see it banded around the, the internet, oh, your non-met technique is amazing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, whether, you, whether they're talking to whatever painter, you know, and non-mets isn't a technique. It is the result of, of technique, all right? And you can get good techniques, bad techniques, get good techniques. Uh, so you can get good non-mets and bad non-mets. So when I teach my non-met course, one of the first things I say, let's start, this is in no particular order by the way, is have faith. That, that, that is massive. If you get halfway through your non-met job, let's say you're painting a shield, non-met, and you get halfway through it, you go, no, I don't like it, I'm doing it wrong, and you stop, you literally have just done it wrong by stopping. Now, the reason is, is non-met doesn't really show its beauty until say the last two stages so how do you know you failed how, how do you know you know it's like 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 like, like making like cooking you know you put you, you put all your food in um you you you, you get half half your veg in uh, you put half your spice in you're not quite finished you said no nah, now nah, the end result's awful mm -hmm. you don't know what the end result is until you've got to the end result all right does that make sense so some of these will, will all kind of t fit together and the next thing is is you don't know the end you might only know the end result in the context of the piece it is you're working on you don't know the end result of the context in say the axe head to the finished axe haft well you know because once you paint the axe head you might not like it but when you put the axe haft in when you put the handle in well will you put will your perspective on it change most probably will so you got to finish pieces, have to finish pieces. So that's why I said earlier on, it doesn't necessarily just apply it in my mix. 
but it applies very much to knot nets. Applies to everything, man. Um, so finish, finish, and then you can make a proper judgment whether you have succeeded or not. The next thing, finish, because it's not about doing it right. Oh, I did it right. Oh, I did that bit right. Oh, I did it right. It's not. It's a balancing act. It's not a balanced act. It's balancing. Yeah, you're ebbing and flowing. You're adjusting. Yeah, so don't think in terms of dislikes or passes or failures. When you look at your, when you assess what it is you do, think in terms of adjustments. Yeah, don't think, oh, I don't like that line. Think, oh, that line needs to move left. Yeah, and don't think, oh, well done, I've done it. Because that's not an adjustment either. Yeah, just think in adjustments. Don't think in improvements. Because that's a, that's a judgment. Adjustments. Make sense? Next, simplify your thinking. Over met, uh, over mets, <laughs> um, non mets, and a lot of painting is just overthought. You know, when people see how how few brush strokes I use when I paint, how few coats I use when I paint, they start to ask that question: How? Well, the how comes in reducing everything to its most simplistic ways of looking at it. Like, for example, oh, tell me how do you paint eyes? Well, do I use a big brush or a small brush? Oh, small brush. Do we use a small brush with um, a point on it, or a small brush that goes at? You know, and I see real simple, almost patronising questions, but they're not made to be patronising. They're made to make you engage your mind in a way that actually the answers are all very much there in front of you. Okay, so that one. Understand and choose your method. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, if if you, if you there are different ways of painting different styles of non-metal metallics. Some might be considered um, effective, some might be considered not effective, blah, 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 whatever it is. There's different styles. Um, understand each style or understand the style you're trying to copy or approach. Make sure you know what it is you're going for. So for example, in the beginning, I would paint pretty much everything like a jewel. And keep this this formula of what I call in the course is the rule of jewel going on the model. You know, so a jewel is dark at the top, light at the bottom, with a catch light at the top, and the entire model is uh, is painted using that formula. Darks never meet darks on opposing panels or adjacent panels. And you just work up through a model that way, and it's a real great way of looking at non nets And a top example of that is Daryl Avon's um Caradrian model. We'll have a look at that. Alright. So you learn a lot that way. Understand its strengths and weaknesses. Paint an entire model like that, and then then then, then come back and, and and tell me where it, where it really worked and where it really didn't. Um, and then I have uh, like you, ways of a, a map on um, just using light as a reference point. Um, a map on where all my highlights go. But then I've got other ones that use different formulas. So. There's times when I, in fact, most of my models when I'm painting on mats, I don't even think about light. I just think about what colour needs to go where and in what proportion. And I'll use a formula that gets me through some of those things. You know, so when it comes to non mets there are lots of different approaches and lots of different ways. Learn them all, and then you can understand and pick and choose how and when things work best. So, you know, there comes a point. Um, when you'll start to use a cocktail of all of all of the different styles and methods. What have we got here? Be clear on proportions. Be clear on your consistencies. Number four and five. Um, <coughs> proportions. I mean, you ever try and do non-met gold and you end up pretty much with this really dark black thing and then this creamy white highlight and you've not really painted gold? Well, just just start looking. Do you know what I mean? Use reference material. If you've got all that dark colour on without noticing what are you looking at? Are you looking at your work and are you looking at your reference picture? How have you got the wrong colours in the wrong place? You know, so if I pointed at that wall there and said, that's yellow, you go, oh yeah, yeah. I pointed at my shirt and said it's black, yeah, yeah. And then where's the boundary? Well, you, you know where the boundary is, don't you? So, so use that same simplified thinking. If you've got shading that much and you needed it that much, what point between your brain and your mind said oh yeah I've got to put it on that much even though I can only see it that much 
See what I mean? Just, just, just calm down and really look at the proportions of the things as you try to copy. Yeah, which I'd recommend doing first. Just try to copy some of that mess. Alright? And copy with those things in mind. Then ask yourself, well, for example, you put on that highlight. Oh, can I see the, the base colours through that highlight? And that'll give you an idea of what kind of consistency you might need. That's why I use a dry palette because then I'll, I'll set that consistency on the palette to that, that, that translucency level I need that I can see in your reference. Alright? Mistakes are gifts and answers. In other words, don't give up because you've made a mistake. It's either a gift, you know, you could turn it into a cool little light bloom, or you could turn it into like a flash of light, or you could turn it into battle damage. Yeah. Or, on the opposite side, they might be mistakes, but in those mistakes, they give you the answers. Oh, I don't like that highlight, it's too big, make it smaller then. You know, oh, I don't like that, it's too scruffy, make it neater. Do you know what I mean? And all these things that people get frustrated about, oh, they're in light, aren't you? Just, just create the opposite situation. Yeah, and then see how that goes. Oh, it's not blended smooth enough. Well, blended smooth enough. Oh, well, my paint's too thick. Well, thin it then. Do you know what I mean? It's all slimpy flat. You're thinking, yeah. Um, and have faith that you're gonna do it because all these they can they they all work together. Last one. Develop and use your eye skills. Understanding what a colour wheel is all about is different to knowing how to use it. Understanding what spot colours are about is different to know how to use it. Understanding how to create a focal point of the model and <clears throat> well, you, you get the idea. Now that all comes in developing your eye. Allowing your eye to see is different than trying to see. Allowing your eye to see is different than looking for something. Allowing your eye, so you've got to learn how to allow your eye to see things. So, for example, when people, oh, the focal points here, oh, and other people, oh, the focal points there. Oh, the fo but generally, you'll find the more experienced artists will all agree on the same focal point while everyone else wants to talk about it. You know, because an experienced artist knows how to allow his eye to see. And, um, it's a real useful tool. The next one is, is, is fuzzy eyes. Defocus your eyes and look at a model and that'll really help you to have more faith that you're going in the right direction. It'll also really help you to simplify your thinking because in that instance when you see less, some things pop out a little bit more and that's the beauty of fuzzy eye. Um, so there you go. This was the result of a, a day's discussion of non-mets and we were doing some non-mets as well. Um, so get your questions down below hope these help yeah um and let me know what you think cheers guys see you later